Today, we're gonna to work on part two of our classes on layers. Last time we got familiar with layers, so today we're gonna to advance things a little bit. I think you'll like it. Let's go. Hi, I'm Terry Banner, a professional photographer, and I'm teaching you Photoshop from the very beginning. Now we're on episode eight, continuing on with layers. Now as photographers, we're sometimes faced with uh, composition decisions or exposure decisions that you understand if you create the image right then and there, you know it's not gonna be perfect. When you have the knowledge of what you can do inside of Photoshop, back in front of the computer, then you can have a lot more freedom when you're out shooting because you know you can take care of it later in post. Let me take you through step-by-step step on how I use layers and frankly knew when I took the shot, the things that I'd have to recreate in Photoshop to get the end result that my mind was thinking about when I saw the shot. All right, let's check this out. We're back inside Photoshop and I brought up an image here. And a couple little things, I think we talked about this before, as down here you can see the actual size of the image. So this is getting to be a pretty big image at 1.4 gigs. But you'll see here, you can pull this down and you can get whatever information you want. And in this case, we're gonna to go to layer count. And we can see that this image has 27 layers, actually in three groups, but 27 layers. So as we go through this, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through these layers so you can kind of see what it was that I did and how I got to this point. We were driving around in Maine looking for photo opportunities and I came across this lake and I thought, wow, that's a pretty cool boathouse. I like this shot, but there are a few things that I'd need to change in order to make this a really nice picture. So let me show you the steps that I did when I went through on this image. So obviously I shot the image. Let's go ahead and get into this here. So as you know, in Photoshop, you can take a, a set of images and on those layers and you can group them. So that's what I've done here. We have three groups and that's just only for learning purposes and for organizing. Cause in this case, remember there's 27 layers. So with 27 layers, you don't want to, you don't want to have them all on there at the same time. You can kind of condense them a little bit by putting them into groups. You also have the ability to color code a layer. So on here, if we went down here, we can go all the way down to the bottom to color and pick a color that you may want to change for that particular layer. And that might give you some organizational tools as well, color coding some of the layers. I also encourage you to label the layers. And in, in all of these cases, all you do is double click on the word and then type in whatever it is you want. And now your layer is named. So let's go down to the bottom and see what I did first. And you'll see that all of these eyeballs are off because I'm gonna reveal this as we go. So let's go to the very first layer here and you'll see what I did is I removed, and you can kind of see here, we'll zoom in. You can kind of see that we have done a retouching layer. So I did an empty layer, open it up, and then that's where I did my retouching. I used my retouching tools. So whenever you do retouching, I'll give you an example here. We'll go to the background layer, add a new layer, and this is just a, a blank layer, nothing's done to it. So if we go to our, let's just say our spot remove tool, come up here and we make sure we sample all layers because that way it's gonna always stay with that image. So now you can come through and you can just start removing whatever it is that you wanted to remove, any of the details that you wanted to take out. Like in this case, we were taking out the basketball hoop. And all of this, you can see right here, all of this just remains on that layer. So you can turn that off or on uh, at your leisure. And you can obviously set the opacity back if, you've, if you want to trim something back. But in this case, we're just doing a remove layer. So we're taking the things out that are distracting. And what you'll find, at least I find when I'm working on an image, start removing things and think, okay, I think I've got everything. And then you move on a little bit and you realize, hmm, no, I, I didn't. I got to get some more. So you'll see these from time to time. So let me just go ahead and take that. We'll just toss that into the trash. So let's go ahead and turn this layer on. And you can see what I did was I removed some specks off the water as well as the, the basketball hoop and the basketball hoop's reflection. So whenever you're working over a lake or anything that has reflections, you got to kind of consider uh, not only do I want to remove 
what is you know, distracting me, but I also want to remove the reflection. So in the human eye, we'll always go to things that are of high contrast. So in a shot like this, your eye is going to go right to this light area where the basketball hoop is. And so in order not to have that, my focus was going to be on this, this boathouse. So what we're going to do is uh, just remove that by retouching it out. Then the next thing I did was, you'll see here, it's called a window clean. You can barely see it here, so what we'll do is we'll zoom up so you can see what it is that I'm doing. And we'll turn that on again. And we'll see there were some reflections or something inside the boathouse that, I, that were a little distracting, so I figured, well, I'd clean it up. The next image that I did is I decided I was going to straighten the image. So this was just a simple cropping uh, tool where you grab the crop tool and just rotate it. You can do that, or you can also do a, um, an overall transformation, which is we can go up to transform and then scale and do the different things you want. And in this case, we just straightened it with this layer right here. So going forward, this has to be below everything else because if we didn't have this in place, these retouching pieces wouldn't be able to be seen. Uh, they would be off because we have this one that's tilted and from here on out, we're doing everything on that, that straightened image. So here's another retouching. There looks like there's some water debris that we had to take out. Let me go ahead and zoom this up so you see a little bit better. Some debris on the water, so we wanted to take those out. Looks like up here too, there was some white coming through from some buildings, so we took that out as well. Now, as I was looking at this image and getting closer, it's like, well, I really don't want this, this dock that was probably used during the summertime and was, was taken out. So let's remove that dock. So that's what I did. I removed that dock there. And if I decided later I wanted to keep that dock for whatever reason, it's on its own layer. So I could bring it back if I wanted to. So that's kind of the cool part about, about Photoshop is you have the ability to put these all in layers and then go back in time and make changes, alterations to your image because it's on its own layer. So then I looked at it and said, well, I, I got to remove the other dock as well. So that's the dock right here. We got to remove that as well. So we retouched that out. And then I wanted to do some changes in the trees. So it, it <laughs> kind of appeared to me that um, the trees were a little distracting, a little repetitive because of when I removed the dock. So I had to grab some trees from another spot in order to put those in. So that's what we did as we covered that. We also removed some wood. There was a, a section over here where it looked like maybe a fence or something. So I removed that so we didn't have to look at that. And the next thing was also another retouching layer. Let's go ahead and back this out just a little bit so we can see the whole image. I'm just using the space bar and grabbing my little hand and moving it around. So on this layer here, I removed some white that was up here in the building. So we removed that. And the next one was fixed reflection. So if you remember, I removed that dock right here, right? So let's go ahead and zoom that up. I removed the dock and now look, the dock reflection is still in there. So we got to get rid of that. So that's what I took and got rid of on, on that particular layer. So in the next layer here, I thought that this white tree was kind of distracting. It was an angled line that was coming out. And so I wanted to remove that as well as its reflection. So I removed both. And then I also came back in and started fixing the reflection of that other dock. So, so as I'm going through this, I'm seeing things. It's like, oh yeah, I got to do that. Oh, don't forget to do that. And then you look at it, you take a long look at it, you think, oh, I never fixed that reflection on that dock, uh, the dock's reflection in the water. So let me go back and fix that. So that's that first group of images. So let's go in here and we'll open up the next set. And what we did here is there's a little bit of white up in the trees. So I removed some more white in the trees. And then I wanted to fix the boathouse walls. So let's take a look at these here. As we look at this, you can see that there was some sort of staining or algae or something that's created on these walls. 
So I thought, well, let me go in and fix that. And so I did that on both sides, lowered this wall just a little bit so it would be all the way down. And then I noticed there was some dry rot that was on the bottom of the, uh, of the boathouse. And so I thought, well, let me go ahead and fix that. And believe me, fixing dry rot on a Photoshop image is way easier than fixing it on your home. So on this next layer, this is just some general retouching. You can see here, I took away some stuff that was in the background in the trees. There was a little security light there. I took that back out. There's a, there's a broom, a red broom that I didn't want to have distracting. And then the next one here we went up. Let's go ahead and zoom out so we can see what we did. And that was, I finally got rid of all the white up there because that was pretty distracting. And then of course I had to fix the reflection down here because there wouldn't be white in the water if there wasn't something white reflecting from it. So I had to remove that as well. So before I did a sharpening layer, I did what was called a combo layer. Now I encourage you guys to always do sharpening as your very last layer before you go, you know, you're finished with the image. But in this case, I think I actually thought I was finished, but I wasn't. So I did a sharpening layer, but... It is what it is, so I just left it. And the way I do a sharpening layer is I take all of the layers that I did previously, all these layers, and I build them into one more layer. So the way I do that is I create a new layer, click right here, and then I hold down a whole bunch of keys. I hold down the shift, I hold down the option, I hold down the command, and then I hit the letter E. And what that does is that combines all the open layers below and builds you a brand new layer. It does increase the size of the image, but it also gives you another new starting point. So I use that all the time. So let me get rid of this here. So any time that you see in any of the retouching that I do, any layer that has a full image layer, right? Anything that shows everything, those are layers that I've done a combo layer. I'll do a combo layer. In fact, I make a shortcut for it. And I'll, I'll talk to you about that when we get into actions. But I made a shortcut for it. So all I have to do is press a, one simple key and I can make a combo layer of what it is that I'm doing. So a combo layer is something that you want to do. So remember, the keys for it are on the Mac, Mac it is Shift, Option, Command, E. And if it's on the PC, it's going to be Shift, Alt, Control, E. So it's a real handful of buttons, but once you push them all, and, and, I, and what you need to do first is make a new layer, and then everything will be put up onto that layer. So we'll do that one more time so you get it. Plus, we're adding a new layer. Then we hit Shift, Option, Command, E, and it builds all of that information from below onto one layer cool thing. You'll use it all the time. It's great. So obviously if I'm doing a sharpening layer, that's what I want to do. I want to take that layer, grab all the layers I've done so far and build it into a layer that I'm going to sharpen everything because I want to sharpen everything at the same time. All right. So we've now we've gone through group two. Let's go ahead and head up to group three and let's see what we reveal there. And you see, I've color coded these and that's just for the teaching aspect of it for me. But for the most part, you can color code as you go or not at all, but try to name your layers. That's going to help you a lot. So now we look back down over here. And the first thing we did was we fixed the sidewall. See over here that we have, uh, it looks like I obviously I moved I moved everything. Look at that. So I did another straightening along the way. But we fixed on this sidewall. You could see there was some debris. There were some skis and a few things. So I removed all that. And the next thing was to remove some more white. So let's go back and see where I had some white that was probably reflecting from some building somewhere. Let's go ahead and click that. Yeah, look, way up here. Removed all, Just replace that with other fall trees so that we could not have that. And then I started looking, you know, I thought, look, I'm almost done here. So what else can I do to make this even better? And that really is sometimes the question that you need to ask is you have to say, okay, what is the way that I'm going to make something a little bit better? 
And the way you do it is start looking at your image nice and close. So here, this was to fix the bricks. So remember, back in the very beginning, let's go all the way back down here. So I turn off all the layers. Remember I had this, this dry dock here, right? This dock that was uh, out, out of the water. So what I did is that I, I removed it. During the process of removing it, I also kind of ruined the way the bricks look. So that's how I had to go fix it. So this was time to skit down and fix those bricks. And the process of, of retouching, we'll get more into retouching, but sometimes it's as simple as grabbing, you know, selecting a set of, of bricks from one area and dragging them over until they fit into place. And that's a way that you can do that. So that's how I did that on those bricks. So uh, again, taking a real fine look at things. There are some reflections I didn't get rid of. So I went back in, made another layer for retouching of the reflections and took out the reflections out of that. So that allowed us to really have the smooth water that I was looking for. Now, is there anything else that I wanna do on this? And I started looking at it close and saying, okay, well, what do I wanna do? Ah, let's get rid of those chairs. We don't really need those chairs. So let's go ahead and take those out. And again, retouching those out using a, an image from another spot, you know, using, you know, part of the trees and part of some bricks and bringing them over and just laying it on top until it fits. Then I realized that I also didn't fix some bricks on the last move, so I had to go in and fix that. That's the bricks right here. I had to fix those, so that was just another repair, retouch repair job where I fixed that. And then finally on this, I just wanted to improve the color. So improving the color was a way that I was able to just click a button here and I enhanced the color. So as we go through this image, you can see now how we ended up with 27 different layers. So I'll turn this off and on. And the way you wanna do this, if you wanna turn off all the layers and see where you started, you go down to the bottom layer where your eyeball is, hold the option key and click, and that will turn off all your layers that you worked with. And then another click gets them all back. So you can see the difference of what I did from start to finish on all of these images. So that's working with layers, stacking layers, and just keep stacking and stacking and doing more layers. And you're able to really control. So if I go into something and I want to remove something, I can easily remove it or reduce it or replace it with another layer. But I've got everything at my disposal on all these layers as we go through of everything that I want to do. And organizing them is, again, super easy, right? So you can take a group of layers, highlight them, hold the shift key and grab all the layers. And then if you just do command G or control G, that will make a new group of layers. Command G for the Mac, control G for the PC. And that makes all those layers you highlighted into a group. If you're enjoying these free classes on learning Photoshop, take a moment to click the like button, then hit subscribe button. And remember to ring the little bell so you can be reminded of my next video. Next time, we're going to talk about adjustment layers. It's a whole new way to handle layers inside of Photoshop. You're not going to want to miss it. If you have any questions about the topics I've covered, feel free to leave the questions or comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, you can always reach me via email at terry at imagelight.com if you'd rather contact me that way. Next time, it's all about adjustment layers, so we'll see you then. Yeah.